Hello everyone, today I will introduce a Thai drama Golden Blood. The story begins with the mob boss trying to make a nefarious deal on the turf of the mafia Wilfred. Wilfred is a mafia. He has a conscience and a bottom line, and will never allow this kind of transaction to exist. The negotiation between the two ended in failure, and they broke up unhappy. On the other hand, Cahan knocked down everyone with a Rubik's Cube. Not only that, but also took the gun empty-handed, and his combat effectiveness is very strong. <laughs> After negotiating with the gangsters failed, Wilfred was afraid of being retaliated by them, so he sent Cahan as a bodyguard to protect his son Thurlow. In this way, Cahan came to Thurlow's villa. At this time, Thurlow was still asleep and the first meeting between the two could be said to be very unpleasant. Thurlow was at a loss, had no idea who Cahan was, and Cahan followed Wilfred S. instructions completely and entered the door forcefully. Afterwards, Thurlow called Wilfred to complain. Unexpectedly, Wilfred S. attitude was also very firm. They not only wanted to live together, but also went to school together. Thurlow couldn't accept such a request and rushed out the door. Unexpectedly, a figure suddenly attacked him from behind. Fortunately, Cahan arrived in time and he subdued him with a shoulder throw. However, this person is actually Thurlow's good friend Tace, who was just joking. In front of Tace, Thurlow said that Cahan was his distant relative who came to join him because he was admitted to the same university. After Tace left, the two talked for a while. Since Cahan couldn't get rid of, Thurlow had to accept it, but he told Cahan to change his title, and he was not allowed to call himself master in front of others, because Thurlow didn't want people to know that he was the son of the mafia. In this way, the cohabitation life of the bodyguard and the young master officially began. Of the two washed the dishes and the other took a shower, but the water suddenly stopped while washing. So, Cahan immediately went upstairs to help. Unexpectedly, Thurlow was quite shy. After pushing and pulling, the two got very close at once, and the atmosphere became so ambiguous. Finally, Cahan wiped Thurlow clean with a towel. This is not a bodyguard, it's a decathlon. On this day, Thurlow and Wilfred are on the phone every day. Although Thurlow was not in danger now, Wilfred was still worried. In fact, Wilfred's worry is necessary because the underworld has already learned about Thurlow's dynamics and is preparing to attack him. The next day, Cahan made breakfast and was pouring water when Thurlow tried to play tricks on Cahan. Unexpectedly, Cahan was not only agile, but also able to do two things at once, which made Thurlow look stupid. Once at school, Thurlow pretended to tie his shoelaces and knocked a girl down on purpose. While Cahan was caring for the girl, he turned around and ran away. But before he ran far, Thurlow was covered from behind. After a long time, Tace still attacked from behind. Is this their unique way of greeting? In the last second, the two were still complaining about how terrible Cahan was. In the next second, Cahan found them both. It seems that the bodyguard has to have the function of location tracking. On the way to the classroom, the beautiful Dane caught Thurlow's eye. When Dane was accosted by the senior Abby, Thurlow stepped forward and wanted to go up to the hero to save the beauty. Coincidentally, Dane, Thurlow and Abby turned out to be classmates, so they went to the classroom together and waited for the class to start. Soon, Dane's good friend Jaima also came to the classroom. But she almost fell, but fortunately Cahan reached out and helped her in time. This move made Jaima have a good impression of Cahan, and he has been secretly observing him for the second half of the class. During a bathroom break, Thurlow marveled at Cahan's charm, and he quickly caught the attention of a girl. However, Cahan is not interested in girls. He only cares about Thurlow's safety. Thurlow felt speechless, feeling that he was not active in finding a partner and there must be something wrong. On the other side, Dane and Jaima are also chatting. One of them has a crush on Thurlow and the other on Cahan. It seems that there is no conflict between the sisters. However, the next moment Abby appeared again, 
harassing Dane, and said what he thought was romantic. The Thurlow trio reappeared and successfully rescued Dane. Beauty these two times made the relationship between them closer, and they exchanged contact information with each other. When leaving, Thurlow and the other two were blocked by Abby, probably because he couldn't understand Abby's behavior. Thurlow also became less polite and made a mockery of him. Abby immediately became angry and wanted to hit Thurlow, but Cahan stopped him just in time. Oh, ah, oh, I, I, no way. Afterwards, Cahan gave Abby a stern reprimand, and if Thurlow hadn't stopped Abby, Abby might have been injured. After returning home, Thurlow told Cahan that he dared to provoke Abby because Cahan was by his side. As soon as these words came out, both of them were stunned. Thurlow's words are tantamount to agreeing with Cahan's identity. It seems that the relationship between the two has made great progress. Unfortunately, the relationship between the two soon returned to the original point, because Cahan reported to Wilfred everything that happened today, including meeting Dane. Thurlow originally wanted to question, but when he saw Cahan who was exercising, he looked dumbfounded. After reacting, Thurlow and Cahan had an argument. He mocks Cahan as one of Wilfred S. dogs. Cahan was silent for a moment before saying that he was doing it to repay his favor. It turned out that Cahan was an orphan, and Wilfred rescued him and brought him up. So, as long as it can repay Wilfred, he is willing to do anything. Unfortunately, Thurla was still so angry that he threw something at Cahan and ordered Cahan not to hide. Cahan didn't hide anymore, just stood there and was hit, bleeding from his forehead. Seeing this, Thurlow was stunned and seemed to have some regrets. The next day, the two continued to go to school, but this time Thurlow offered to sit in the co-pilot. It seemed that he not only let go of what happened last night, but also completely accepted Cahan. Today, the college held a welcome ceremony. There is an activity that requires two or two teams to go on stage and dance, so Thurlow dragged Cahan onto the stage. It's just that Cahan's dancing posture, no matter how you look at it, looks like a big goose struggling. It turns out that he is not decathlon, he can't do it just by dancing. Just then, Cahan saw a man in dark glasses secretly filming Thurlow, without even thinking about it. He chased after him. The rest of the people were stunned for a moment and then followed to find Cahan. After blocking the man in sunglasses, Cahan hit him directly. Unexpectedly, the man in the sunglasses was also a master, and at first glance he was sent by the underworld. After a few rounds, the man in sunglasses was kicked to the ground by Cahan, but the next second, he took out his gun directly. However, Cahan has no fear at all, and it is easy for him to grab a gun empty-handed. Just when Cahan was about to use a gun to force the man in sunglasses to hand over his phone, Tace and the others approached him. The man in sunglasses took the opportunity to escape, and Cahan had to put the gun away first. As a senior, Abby is also at the orientation event. He came over and laughed at Cahan. He was too timid to even dance. As a result, just one look from Cahan made Abby afraid to move. If you can't beat them, join them and in the end Abby simply treats the five of them to dinner. It seems that Abby is not bad. At least he is quite generous. After returning home in the evening, Thurla was sullen again. It turned out that he wanted to continue playing with Dane and the others, but Cahan took him home because he was unsafe at night. In the middle of the night, Thurla sneaked downstairs. Unexpectedly, he was discovered by Cahan before he left the house. Just like that, Cahan took Thurlow back to the room with a princess hug. Thurlow wanted to fight back, but Cahan pinned him on the bed. Good guy, this is too close. As if I'm going to kiss him in the next second. After that, Cahan simply laid a bed outside Thurlow's room to prevent him from escaping in the middle of the night. As a result, Thurlow opened the door to say his order had arrived. Although Thurlow was in pajamas, Cahan was still worried. In the end, he went out with Thurlow to get things. After receiving the items, Thurlow realized that he had no money with him. So, he sent Cahan home to get the money. Cahan ran home that he realized that he could pay by mobile phone. By the time he chased him out, Thurlow had already left in the delivery rider's car. 
It turned out that the delivery rider was pretended by Tace, just to pick Thurlow out. Thurlow couldn't be happier thinking about getting rid of Cahan, he will pay for all the expenses tonight. Elsewhere, Dane and Jaima are waiting for Thurlow at the bar. In the end, they were harassed by a few hooligans. But do these two girls have some kind of attractiveness? Why are they always harassed? Just then, Thurlow stepped forward again. Just as Thurlow was confronting the gangster, Abby suddenly appeared. He helps Thurlow deal with the gangsters. Abby is worthy of being a senior, and he still has a bit of momentum. Seeing this, the two hooligans left quickly. After driving away the hooligans, Abby sat down very familiarly and invited everyone to drink together. Anyway, it was Thurlow's treat. Young man, after a few drinks, he forgot all the grievances. Abby just integrated into the circle of Thurlow and the others. On the other side, Cahan was driving to the bar. After drinking for three rounds, Thurlow was a little overwhelmed. He got up to go to the toilet, but was accidentally knocked down by a gangster. Anyone with a discerning eye can see that the other party is deliberately looking for something. So, the two groups of people fought like this. Just when Thurlow was about to be punched, Cahan arrived in time again and blocked the opponent's fist. How to say, Cahan is also a professional player. These gangsters can only be beaten passively with him. Thurlow still panicked when he saw someone holding a beer bottle and hurried up to stop him, eventually hurting himself. <laughs> Seeing Thurlow hurt, Cahan was angry and blamed himself, but he didn't forget to let Dane and others leave first and then clean up the group of punks. After leaving the bar, Abby asked Dane and Jaima to leave together and he was responsible for delivering Tace, the drunk. As a result, Tace was irrational and couldn't even answer where his home was. <laughs> on the other side, Cahan carefully put a band-aid on Thurlow and warned him not to mess around in the future because his blood is extremely precious. Thurlow was said to be wronged. After all, he was injured to help Cahan. Seeing this, I boldly guess, could it be that Thurlow was a rare blood type? And Sun selling roses came, and Thurlow bought them all at once, and gave them an education fund to let their children study. It seems that Thurlow is still very kind. In order to thank Cahan for his repeated rescue, Thurlow gave him a bouquet of roses instead. How can anyone send roses to express their gratitude? However, Thurlow was very serious, and even acted coquettishly so he couldn't accept it. Taking the flowers, Cahan wanted to continue preaching, but was stopped by Thurlow's hand. The two looked at each other unexpectedly, and the atmosphere became ambiguous, until Thurlow was so sleepy that he fell on Cahan's shoulder. Seeing Cahan's expression was obviously tempting, right? It turns out that the aloof Cahan also has his heartbeat sometimes. Then, Cahan put Thurlow on his back, along the way. He couldn't restrain his smile even if he wanted to. After getting in the car, he carefully inspected Thurlow's wound and finally got closer and smelled the roses that Thurlow had given him. An iron-blooded tough guy looked extraordinarily shy at this moment. On the other hand, Abby tried his best to send Tace back to his home. Tace recognized Abby as Dane, hugged and kissed him. After realizing that he had admitted the wrong person, he kicked the other person away again. Abby helped the drunk man undress and got kicked from time to time. Thanks to Abby's good temper, Tace would have been ignored by someone else. In the end, Tace slept directly in the bathtub and refused to move no matter how much Abby tried to persuade him. In the end, Abby had no choice but to bring pillows and quilts to help him cushion and spread them. Looking at Tace's sleeping face, Abby couldn't help but smile fondly. It seems that this pair is the deputy CP. This is the rhythm of turning rivals into lovers. At the beginning, the CPs of the two teams went online one after another, but then, aren't Thurlow and Abby still jealous because of Dane's rivalry? This is changing really fast. Early the next morning, Thurlow was suffering from a hangover. Fortunately, Cahan prepared various hangover soups in time, while Thurlow obediently drank his soup. Cahan played Rubik's Cube beside him. Seeing this, Thurlow also wanted to try, but unfortunately he couldn't even spell one side. Finally, 
Thurlow angrily scrambled the Rubik's Cube and returned it to Cahan, unexpectedly. Cahan didn't even need to look at it. He turned it around a few times and then recovered, which stunned Thurlow. It turned out that Cahan had no friends since he was a child, and only this Rubik's Cube was with him. So he was so proficient in playing Rubik's Cube, Thurlow felt a little distressed after hearing this. But fortunately Cahan has him as a friend now. Later, Thurlow made Cahan sit down with him for dinner. The relationship between the two took a step further. On the other side, Tace finally woke up. Fortunately, he didn't forget what happened last night, and he knew how to apologize obediently to Abby. Seeing this, Abby made some jokes and let Tace go to take a bath. It seems that the way the two get along is the type of happy friends. When he was in school, Thurlow was kind-hearted and prepared a breakfast for the security guard. Cahan noticed the change in security out of professional sensitivity. Before class, several of them chatted outside for a while. Tace woke up with a hangover and a headache. But Thurlow was lucky because Cahan prepared various hangover soups for him to help him relieve his headache. During class, Cahan passed a security guard who was wearing the clothes of the big security guard in the morning, but with a serious expression. Obviously another person, Cahan thought there must be something wrong with the security guard. In the art class, Cahan's operation was very good, which fascinated Jaima. Others, however, saw Cahan's work and felt irrelevant to his topic. Making fun of him, Cahan felt a little embarrassed. Even though he was a wooden man, he also felt shy. Then, Thurlow went to wash the brushes, and Cahan wanted to go with him, but Jaima stopped him. However, this time Thurlow was really in danger. The security guard blocked him in the bathroom just now, and Thurlow couldn't fight back. Also, the security guard wasn't asking for money, but asking Thurlow to do something. On the other hand, Dane was worried as he watched Thurlow take so long to wash his brushes. Cahan heard this. He immediately remembered the security guard he saw earlier and ran out. Once inside the bathroom, Cahan got into a scuffle with the security guard. Unexpectedly, this security guard is also a master, and he has the upper hand in front of Cahan. Seeing the security continue to hurt Thurlow, Cahan exploded and pushed him away. Unexpectedly, the security guard took out a knife in the next second. In order to save Thurlow, Cahan was cut on the chest, and the two continued to fight. <laughs> Finally, Dane and Jaima arrived, and when they saw the scene, they were terrified and screamed. The security guard was afraid of attracting others and was forced to leave in a hurry. Cahan tried to chase again, but was stopped by Thurlow. Outside the emergency room, Jaima tentatively asked Thurlow if he had any feud. Otherwise, why would someone want to kill him? This instead reminded Thurlow, who began to think about it. Later, Tace also came to the hospital. He was chasing the murderer, but unfortunately he ran too fast and failed to catch up. Fortunately, Cahan's wound is not serious. Just pay more attention to rest. Then, Thurlow entered the ward alone, and he asked Cahan directly if someone was trying to kill him. Cahan didn't answer the question, with a dazed expression on his face. Then, Thurlow called Wilfred to ask, but Wilfred said it was not a big deal, and hung up the phone after speaking. It seems that they still want to continue to hide this matter. On the other side, Sophie, the mafia boss, slapped his hand directly. Although they failed this time, not only are they not prepared to stop, but they have to intensify their efforts to succeed next time. On the other hand, Thurlow found that there was no dinner at home. He came to Cahan's room to see what was going on, but found that Cahan was sweating profusely and his body temperature was terribly high. Still looks sick. Seeing Thurlow, Cahan struggled to get up to make dinner, only to be held back by Thurlow. Cahan is like this. Why would Thurlow let him cook? So, he gave an order. Today he cooks by himself. Cahan is not allowed to do it. Before cooking, Thurlow gave Cahan a scrub. This is also a classic plot in Thai TV dramas. If you are sick, you must wipe yourself. But rubbing his body, Thurlow still didn't forget to tease the wooden man Cahan. Anyway Cahan didn't dare to disobey the order. After wiping himself, Thurlow started cooking. It's a pity that he has no experience. And it is very difficult to peel a carrot. Under Cahan's guidance, 
Thurlow barely solved the carrots, and the subsequent steps were reasonable, especially the salt sprinkling gesture, which had already mastered the essence of cooking. In the end, the two ate face to face, but Thurlow was not confident in his craftsmanship, so he ordered the food if he knew it. Unexpectedly, Cahan said that this was a meal Thurlow specially cooked for him, and he wanted to eat it no matter what. Then, he ate a spoonful with no expression on his face. Seeing this, Thurlow also ate a spoonful of rice. Judging from his expression, the meal was obviously not very tasty, but Thurlow also insisted that it was the atmosphere. So he lit a candle. An ordinary dinner turned into a candlelight dinner in an instant. Then, Thurlow fed Cahan a spoonful of rice. Although this picture looks very warm and the atmosphere is very exciting, but I still have to say that Thurlow just doesn't want to eat the food he cooked, and he doesn't have to eat it himself if he feeds it to Cahan. Sure enough, Thurlow then persuaded Cahan to eat more, but he didn't eat a bite himself. Cahan had a knowing expression, but he still finished his meal pamperingly. Back in the room, Cahan leaned against the door like a teenage girl in love. Just at this time, Thurlow came to help Cahan apply the medicine. Seeing Cahan scarred back, Thurlow felt distressed and at the same time relaxed his movements. Even so, Cahan was still in pain, but he managed to hold it back. How can a tough guy cry out for pain? Seeing this, Thurlow persuaded Cahan to relax. In front of him, Cahan can just be an ordinary person without any disguise. At night, Thurlow continued to deliver medicine to Cahan, but found that he was still awake. So, while playing Rubik's Cube, he guarded Cahan to sleep. At this moment, Thurlow saw a piece of cloth hanging on the wall, and when he lifted it, he found a bunch of withered roses underneath. Thurlow gave Cahan the other day. Unexpectedly, Cahan kept it. The flowers were all withered, but he was still reluctant to throw them away. Seeing this, Thurlow couldn't help laughing. Although Cahan is a tough guy, he can always touch the softest part of Thurlow's heart. The next morning, Cahan got up as usual to make breakfast, as expected of a tough guy. After waking up from sleep, all wounds will heal immediately. Besides, he knew exactly what Thurlow liked, even what kind of fried eggs Thurlow liked to eat. Thurlow, by comparison, knew nothing about Cahan, so Thurlow threatened Cahan with a hunger strike to tell him something about himself. Facing such a wayward young master, what else can Cahan do? What can I do if my young master pets himself? And just like that, Cahan told his story, adopted by Wilfred because he had the same blood type as Thurlow. After that, Cahan grew up learning martial arts, boxing and darts, etc., and eventually became what he is now. After listening, Thurlow was very dissatisfied. He thinks that Cahan's life is too boring, which can be summed up in a few sentences. He has no friends, let alone a girlfriend, but Thurlow was not reconciled, and asked what kind of people Cahan liked. Unexpectedly, Cahan actually answered, he likes kind, lively, and a little self-willed people. Cahan never took his eyes off Thurlow as he answered. These words, Thurlow also fit. This is not talking about the ideal type. This is a confession. Unfortunately, Thurlow was completely unaware and continued to ask questions. In short, Cahan's life is all about Thurlow. Every three months, he has to donate blood to prevent future accidents in Thurlow. However, whether donating blood or protecting Thurlow, Cahan is willing to do all of these. In return for Cahan, Thurlow decided to do something for him too. Unexpectedly, Cahan asked Thurlow to go for a run with him, which cost Thurlow his life. After a few steps, Thurlow collapsed and refused to continue. In the end, it was Cahan who carried it back to him. On the other side, an illegal transaction of the underworld was caught by the police. Neither the money nor the goods were received. When Sophie got angry, Wilfred made a phone call. It turned out that he told the police about the transaction. Who told the underworld to attack Thurlow? After hanging up the phone, Sophie was so angry that she wanted to drop the phone. It's just that Wilfred's operation is also very puzzling. Isn't he provoking the underworld? Aren't you afraid that the opponent will step up efforts to catch Thurlow? On the other side, 
Tace came to Abby's house and returned the clothes he borrowed last time. However, Abby happened to be bored and took Tace to go out to play. Tace wanted to invite Thurlow to join him, thinking that it would be more lively. However, Thurlow turned down Tace's invitation, citing homeschooling as an excuse. But just after refusing, Thurlow ordered Cahan to take the car keys and prepare to drive out. Coincidentally, Thurlow was seen by Tace as soon as he went out. So Tace called him and wanted to ask him why he lied. However, Thurlow answered the phone without explaining. Instead hanging up directly, Tace wanted Abby to keep up with Thurlow's car, but Abby became jealous instead, thinking that Tace paid too much attention to Thurlow, and he was still driving here after being hungry for a long time. He felt that Tace only cared about Thurlow. After hearing these words, Tace had no choice but to apologize obediently and not let Abby go after Thurlow. Turns out the reason Thurlow lied and didn't answer the phone was that he decided to leave all of today's time for Inyan, dedicating the day to him completely. They came to a restaurant that was closed. For others the restaurant was closed but not for the two of them because today the place was taken by Thurlow. You can do whatever you want with money. After the food was served, Cahan still wanted to ask what was going on, but Thurlow wanted to keep a sense of mystery. After all, there were still many surprises ahead. Thurlow snapped his fingers, and two waiters came out holding violins. Later, Thurlow and Cahan looked at each other affectionately and fed each other. After eating, the two came to the claw machine again. Unfortunately, neither Thurlow nor Cahan can catch the doll. In the end, I was so anxious about Cahan that I almost didn't want to leave. This story tells us that claw machines all over the world look the same. After buying drinks, the two came to a dart stand again. Several of Thurlow's darts missed the target, and then Cahan made a shot. Seeing that the posture was different, the darts all hit the target. Isn't it a little bullying to let such a professional player participate in the competition? Hey, but this store is taken over by Thurlow so I don't care about it. Later, the boss gave them two puppy headgear, Thurlow picked out the yellow one, and not only excitedly put it on himself, but also enthusiastically helped Cahan put it on. Seeing Cahan's expression, there was a hint of reluctance in the confusion. After all, he is a tough guy, and he has never seen such a gadget. Next, the two played other things. Because of their cute looks, they were dragged by other people to take a few group photos. After playing tired, Thurlow and Cahan came to the bench and sat down, ready to listen to music and rest for a while. Unexpectedly, Thurlow prepared another surprise. That is, he sang a song specially for Cahan, and Cahan was made shy. In the singing, every bit of their getting along also flashed together. From the dislike of the first meeting to the caring for each other afterwards, it is clear that they did not get along for a long time but only after looking at the memories did they realize that there had been so much throbbing and warmth. During this process, both of them were actually tempted. This picture is too beautiful. I have to say that the relationship between the two has progressed quite quickly. After singing, they came to rest by the pool. Cahan concentrated on eating the marshmallow, and Thurlow couldn't help but be attracted to him. Immediately afterwards, seeing Cahan's mouth with marshmallows, Thurlow kindly reminded him. Unexpectedly, Cahan licked the wrong place for a long time and showed Thurlow a dry mouth. To avoid embarrassment, Thurlow got up first to leave. When he came back, he had two more necklaces in his hand. This is a magnet necklace. Two pieces together make a complete heart. Now he and Cahan have one, each with half a heart. Is this an exchange of tokens of love? But these two people don't even know each other's intentions so it's too exaggerated to give couple necklaces as soon as they come up. Unexpectedly, what was even more exaggerated was that after Cahan took the necklace, he wanted to exchange it with Thurlow again, which meant that the two of them gave each other their hearts. Unexpectedly, Cahan seems to be an honest person, so he is so careful. It's hard to end without being together. Seeing the day draw to a close, Thurlow asked Cahan if there was anything else he wanted to play. Cahan was reluctant to speak at first. But after Thurlow's repeated demands, he did. Turns out he wanted to take some more photos with Thurlow. The two wore a couple headgear and a couple necklace, doing funny moves. No matter how you look at it, they are an ordinary couple. At this time, Cahan didn't look so calm. 
He had the appearance of a big boy, which was an experience he had never experienced in the first half of his life. At this moment, a waiter asked Thurlow to help them take some promotional photos, and Cahan wanted to follow, but Thurlow stopped him, Cahan around, when I saw this, I knew something was going to happen, sure enough, there was a sudden power outage within a short while of filming. Then a man appeared, the same guard Gordon who attacked Thurlow last time, on the other hand, Cahan found that real waiters always wear wristbands, but the waiter who just called Thurlow away didn't have any. Upon discovering this, Cahan immediately got up and went to Thurlow. When he arrived, Thurlow had already been tied up. Sure enough, the two waiters were also members of the underworld. The two of them hold Cahan down while Gordon takes Thurlow away. Cahan took out two waiters one after another, and then he hurried to catch up with Gordon. Unexpectedly, the other party directly threw Thurlow into the swimming pool. Thurlow's hands and feet were bound and he could only sink to the bottom of the water. Seeing that Thurlow's life was threatened, Cahan broke out again and kicked Gordon into the pool. Then, Cahan rushed to rescue Thurlow, untied the rope that bound him, and dragged Thurlow to the shore. At this moment, Gordon attacked Cahan from behind and held him underwater by locking Cahan's neck while repeatedly punching Cahan's lungs. After a while, Cahan stopped struggling. Taking care of Cahan, Gordon set his sights on Thurlow. Unexpectedly, the real waiter heard the movement, and Gordon had to leave in order not to be discovered. Gordon was gone. Thurlow jumped into the water to save Cahan. But Cahan has completely lost consciousness. No matter what Thurlow did, artificial respiration and lung compressions, Cahan just didn't wake up. <laughs> Fortunately, with Thurlow's persistent first aid, Cahan finally woke up. Seeing this, Thurlow wept with joy and couldn't help crying while hugging Cahan. Afterwards, Thurlow brought hot water, and the two sat on the bench to relax for a while, facing repeated attacks. Even if Thurlow was careless, he couldn't help but worry, so, he asked Cahan again to tell him the truth. Seeing Thurlow's extremely serious expression, Cahan didn't choose to continue to hide. At the beginning, Sophie brought people to discuss cooperation with Wilfred, nothing more than wanting to make some evil deals on Wilfred's territory. At that time, Wilfred did not agree, even if Sophie threatened him with Thurlow. Later, Sophie wounded his men even more. When it came time for formal negotiations, Wilfred still insisted on his decision and rejected Sophie. Since then, the two have officially started to fight against each other, and this has led to Thurlow's current crisis. After learning the truth, Thurlow finally understood Wilfred and thanked Cahan for saving him every time. Hey, thank you, thank you. Why are you still holding this hand? The yard the next morning, Thurlow thought of Cahan stepping up again and again to save him. Even at the expense of hurting himself, Thurlow was determined to change the status quo. So, he found Cahan and begged Cahan to do something for him with a serious face. It turned out that Thurlow wanted to get rid of his cumbersome status and learn martial arts. In fact, it was all a pretense, and the main reason was that he didn't want Cahan to get hurt again. It's a pity that Cahan, a wooden man, will not show mercy to Thurlow during training. And just like that, Thurlow was forced to take a beating. Finally, he punched Cahan, but he didn't respond, but he hurt his hand. Just asking, is this a scene of domestic violence? In the end, Thurlow was brought down first by Cahan. He thought about it, the angrier he became, but he simply reached out and attacked. Unexpectedly. This sneak attack made him discover the opponent's weakness. It turned out that Cahan was ticklish. Now, Thurlow has found a way to win. He pinned down Cahan and tickled him vigorously. As a result, he accidentally threw himself on him. In this way, the two looked at each other for more than 10 seconds. The atmosphere was ambiguous and awkward. By night, Thurlow was sore. Cahan knew he was caring at this time. 
took the medicine and came to Thurlow's room to rub it for him. Thurlow was a little shy when he heard that he was going to take off his clothes, but when he thought that Cahan had seen everything he should and shouldn't have seen, he no longer hesitated. The scene of rubbing the medicine seemed familiar, but the positions were switched. After applying the medicine, Cahan gave Thurlow a massage. By the time Cahan finished pressing, Thurlow had already fallen asleep comfortably. So, Cahan carefully carried him to the bed. Cahan's actions are worthy of the dual identities of nanny and bodyguard. The next day, Tace was chatting with Dane, and Abby joined in familiarly. Later, Thurlow and Cahan also came to the school. Seeing that everyone is here, Jaima invites everyone to another dance. Others chimed in, but Cahan disagreed. After all, he had to think about safety. To everyone's surprise, at this time, Thurlow, who had always been against Cahan, actually agreed with Cahan this time, and he also refused to go to the dance. Although everyone was puzzled, they didn't continue to think about it. Immediately afterwards, a senior told everyone that they were about to participate in a volunteer camp. Unlike the dance party, the volunteer camp is a public welfare activity held by the society every year. Everyone is very high-minded. Only Thurlow was careful to ask Cahan's opinion. Unexpectedly, Cahan agreed quite simply this time. In fact, Cahan is also thinking about Thurlow. Thurlow has always wanted to live the life of an ordinary person. If he doesn't even have the freedom to participate in a club, he is still an ordinary person. As for safety, Thurlow doesn't have to worry too much with him anyway. Hearing these answers, Thurlow visibly cheered up. Tace on the side was all attracted. After the meeting, Cahan watched Thurlow go to the bathroom. Unexpectedly, Thurlow himself was not worried, and even changed his post to let Cahan go in to solve it. As a result, as soon as Cahan left on the front foot, Tace dragged Thurlow away forcefully on the back foot. It turned out that Tace sensed that the relationship between Thurlow and Cahan was unusual. I have to say that the young man's intuition is very accurate. Facing Tace's questioning, Thurlow wanted to fool him, but in the end he couldn't resist his repeated pleas and told the truth. When Cahan found Thurlow, Tace had already known his identity as bodyguard and was a little afraid of him for a while. Afterwards, Abby invited everyone to burn incense and pray for blessings. Thurlow hesitated, but agreed. It turns out that this shrine is for praying for studies, and one can graduate smoothly after coming to worship. However, Tace didn't quite believe it, and the two lovers almost quarreled face to face. In the end, it was Tace who gave in first. After burning the incense, Abby lit a string of firecrackers. Unexpectedly, Thurlow was so frightened that he immediately knelt down with his hands on his head. Even though Cahan was around to comfort him, it took him a while to stabilize. Afterwards, Cahan specifically stopped Tace and asked him why Thurlow was so afraid of the sound of firecrackers. Fortunately, Tace knows something inside. It turned out that Thurlow witnessed a shooting accident at home when he was a child. Since then, he has been afraid of firecrackers and gunshots. That night, Tace couldn't help but ask Abby if his friend was the son of a gangster who was hunted down by his enemies and had a bodyguard to protect him. Abby isn't stupid either. With these few conditions, it's clear that he's talking about Thurlow. Besides, he already knew Thurlow's identity, but now he doesn't care about it. It's more important to tease Tace. On the other hand, the parties Thurlow and Cahan were still practicing martial arts at this time. Unfortunately, it doesn't look like there's much progress. And here, Abby thought of a good way to protect Thurlow, which was to let his friends know about it. If someone is going to deliberately approach Thurlow, everyone can help to keep an eye on the surrounding area. In fact, Tace also agreed with this method, but he purposely said irony to tease Abby, and he was only happy when he saw the other party getting angry. It seems that the daily way of getting along with this pair of deputy CPs is to make fun of each other. In the evening, Cahan covered Thurlow with the quilt as usual and prepared to leave. Unexpectedly, Thurlow had a nightmare and suddenly woke up from the dream. Seeing this, 
Cahan immediately leaned over to comfort him. Thurlow threw himself into Cahan's arms as well. After Thurlow calmed down, Cahan asked him why he was so afraid of the sound of firecrackers. Because he wanted to know everything about Thurlow, and it all started from childhood. At that time, Thurlow was playing carefree at home with his parents. Unexpectedly, Xiao Jia came to the door disguised as a courier and shot them directly. <laughs> Thurlow was protected by his father, but his mother was shot and left him. After learning about this incident, Cahan was very distressed. That night, he stayed by Thurlow's side and slept with him all night. Wait, why are the two still holding hands? It feels like the two of them have started a sweet cohabitation mode. The next morning, Tace came to collect the signature slip for the volunteer camp. Dane is obviously interested in Thurlow, and if Thurlow goes to camp, she goes with him. It's a pity that Thurlow still hesitated and wanted to discuss it with Cahan again. Now, even Jaima could see that something was wrong between the two of them. Fortunately, Tace helped explain it in time. Thurlow hesitated this time because he felt guilty. Cahan has been required to protect him all the time, and it may be more dangerous to go to other places, but Cahan doesn't care. His duty is to protect Thurlow. It can be said that he was born for Thurlow. If Thurlow was happy, he could be happy too. I have to say that Cahan is really kind to Thurlow. Although the two didn't say it clearly, they are both thinking about each other. On the other hand, Abby volunteered to join the volunteer camp, saying that he wanted to help. But in fact, he just didn't want to leave Tace. Pitiful to the two girls. I haven't had time to express my heart. The original straight guys are now starting to like boys. The point is, the two of them didn't know it. And Jaima was determined to take Cahan down, which was an impossible task. On the other side, Tace told Abby enthusiastically that he was going to participate in the volunteer camp. Abby obviously also participated in the event, but instead of saying anything, he deliberately contradicted Tace. When the ignorant Tace said that he would miss him these days, he laughed from ear to ear. That night, Cahan neatly folded his clothes and put them in the suitcase, much to Thurlow's embarrassment. How can there be such a meticulous bodyguard? However, Cahan, the bodyguard, not only has narrow eyes, but also sees something that shouldn't be seen. It didn't matter if he saw it, but he still said it. <laughs> now, Thurla was really shy, and immediately got up and left. Early the next morning, everyone set off to participate in the volunteer camp. Only then did Tace know that Abby also participated in the event. Originally he was a little angry, but Abby's words made him instantly happy. Abby said that if he participated in the event, Tace would not have to think about him. Dude, I can't see that Abby can be quite a coaxer. I didn't say it before, but I was waiting for this moment. By comparison, the Cahan and Thurlow duo seem to go with the flow. Now, Thurlow can rub Cahan's face at will, just to make him smile more. Unexpectedly, Cahan said he just had to smile at Thurlow. <laughs> Unexpectedly, there will be a day when the wooden man can talk about love like this. After getting off the car, we allocated two by two to set up tents together. Tace was the only one who was left alone. After asking again, no one was willing to partner with him. This is too miserable. Most annoyingly, Abby was still laughing at him from the sidelines. Such a big person, he dare not sleep alone, causing everyone to boo. Oh, <laughs> when the tent was being set up, Tace was still talking about it, apparently out of breath by Abby, unexpectedly. At this time, Abby actually came over and offered to help Tace set up a tent, and even wanted to sleep with him at night. Tace is still wondering. What about Abby's partner? Unexpectedly, Abby said that his partner is Tace. This made Tace feel ashamed. On the other hand, Cahan wanted to do all the work alone, but couldn't resist. Thurlow offered to help. Finally, the two set up the tent together. After finishing his work, Cahan approached Thurlow again under the guise of wiping things, and carefully wiped the dust off his face. Thurlow took the towel and wiped the sweat off Cahan's face. It's 
This support activity is mainly to help the local impoverished children, so Tace put on a dinosaur suit to play with them. Unexpectedly, he was besieged by children. Seeing this, Abby smiled and went up to help him out, and praised Tace's cute outfit. After playing soccer with the kids, Shima shyly handed Kahan a bottle of water. Kahan hesitated, but took it anyway. Then, Thurlow came over, and Dane and Kahan handed him water at the same time. However, Thurlow took the bottle that Kahan offered without giving Dane a look. Only Kahan and Jaima noticed Dane's disappointment. Hey, Dane, don't be sad. It's not that you are unattractive. If you want to blame it, blame Kahan for liking boys. Fortunately, Tace came out to shout at this time, and the heat diverted everyone's attention. Dude, he's still playing in that dinosaur suit. Can't he be hot? Tace didn't change his clothes was not because of Abby's compliment. Unexpectedly, after Abby heard this, he actually splashed water on him, saying to help him cool down. The others were also splashed by him incidentally. Next, the village had brought a few jars of self-brewed wine to drive everyone away from the cold. Cahan didn't want to drink at first, but he couldn't stand everyone's persuasion, and Thurlow was even going to help him hold back the drink. In order not to let Thurlow drink, Cahan still took the wine jar. As a result, he got drunk immediately after drinking, and Cahan's aloof image was gone forever, and he performed and danced directly in front of everyone. Seeing this, Jaima also made a bold move, pushed Thurlow and Cahan away, and jumped up together. At first Thurlow was still laughing foolishly on the sidelines, but the more he looked at it, the more wrong he became. In the end, he couldn't help but rushed forward, separated the two, and took Cahan away directly. Abby and Tace glanced at each other, sensing a slight difference in their aura. On the other hand, Cahan was still drunk and Thurlow told him to lower his head obediently like a child, so that the water could be flushed to wake him up. It took a lot of effort before Thurlow gave Cahan some water. Unexpectedly, after Cahan raised his head, he first teased Thurlow, and the first thing he said was to ask Thurlow if he loved him. <laughs> Visibly flustered, Thurlow had to pour some more water on Cahan to wake him up. This time, Cahan did look more sober, but he continued to ask the question. I know I like for me. Before he could answer, he cautiously moved up to Thurlow and kissed him, but as soon as their lips touched, Thurlow immediately backed away, leaving a word and fled here. Thurlow left. Cahan regretted his impulsiveness. On the other hand, Thurlow was actually very tangled, especially thinking of the scene that just happened, but he made an excuse for Cahan, thinking it must be because he was drunk. It was awkward, but seeing that Cahan was going to bed before his hair was dry, Thurlow took a towel and wiped his hair. Sure enough, he is a tough-mouthed and soft-hearted young master. The next morning, the relationship between the two was back to normal. Thurlow also teased Cahan about the drinking binge last night. At this time, Jaima appeared. She took the initiative to talk to Cahan, and then danced around Cahan's neck to imitate what happened last night. Thurlow's expression froze instantly. Cahan knew he was wrong, and promised not to drink again in the future. On the other side, Tace was still throwing up on the side of the road. No one noticed him except Abby. This is too miserable. Back to Cahan. Thurlow offered to teach with Dane today. It seems that he is jealous. Unexpectedly. Shima followed the trend. Since Thurlow was with Dane, she was with Cahan. Cahan couldn't refuse even if he wanted to. In this way, four people teamed up in pairs. Thurlow even took Dane's hand and left. After everyone left, Abby and Tace stayed where they were, and even posted an advertisement in a leisurely manner. After that, Tace and Abby got down to business, both of them feeling that there was something wrong between Cahan and Thurlow. So, the two of them decided to work together to investigate the matter. On the other hand, Dane and Thurlow were booed by students in class, 
Dane immediately explained that the two of them were just friends. Just then, Kahan and Jaima happened to pass by, and they were a little intimate. Thurlow, who was jealous, deliberately told the students that he and Dane are friends now, but it may not be the case in the future. Now, Kahan's expression also changed. These two were jealous of each other. Then, a student sneaked out, but luckily Kahan found him. While comforting the other party, Kahan learned that he was also an orphan, and sympathy instantly filled Kahan's heart. Maybe no matter what, orphans are abandoned. This scene happened to be seen by Thurlow in the distance, and he was no longer jealous. Now Thurlow only feels sorry for Kahan. Sure enough, Thurlow then told Kahan that he would always be by his side and not worry about being abandoned. <laughs> In the next scene, Tace and Abby sneak behind the two, observing their movements. At this time, Thurlow was in the shower, and Cahan was outside the door. While washing and washing, Thurlow remembered what happened that night again and fell into deep thought. At this time, Tace and Abby were still outside studying the relationship between Cahan and Thurlow, especially on the drunk night. Thurlow's behavior was too strange. At this moment, Kahan sensed something was wrong. Kahan is worthy of being a top bodyguard. Who can spot voyeurs from such a distance? Next, Kahan threw an ant nest over. Tace and Abby were shocked and immediately jumped into the water. What? <laughs> Even so, Tace was still itchy all over. So, Abby took off Tace's shirt. With this push, the distance between the two of them was shortened, and they almost kissed each other. Abby was probably too excited. His nose bleeds. Tace not only didn't dislike him, but also devoted himself to helping him wipe off the nosebleed. But after wiping, he couldn't help leaning forward. Seeing that the two were about to kiss, Abby suddenly reacted, turned and left the pool. S going on with these two people? They all like to stop at critical moments. When Thurlow came out of the shower, Kahan just came back. Instead of telling what Tace and Abby peeked at, he lied that he went to the toilet. However, Thurlow found an ant on Kahan's shoulder. What happened? Do you two have to be so close to an ant? At the bonfire party that night, Kahan was invited by Jaima to sing on stage. However, he was reluctant. At this time, Thurlow said that he would also like to hear Kahan sing, faced with the young master's request. How could Kahan refuse? So, he obediently stepped forward and sang a song for everyone. Along with the singing, the scenes of the two getting along also came to Thurlow's eyes. After experiencing so many life and death, their feelings have also quietly changed. I don't know when the two of them will realize their love for each other. Afterwards, Dane told Jaima what happened today. Both felt that they were one step closer to love. Jaima is going to invite Kahan to go to the stars together in order to get love. The two came to Thurlow and Kahan's tent, but no one answered their calls. In the end, Jaima had to leave unwillingly. Meanwhile, Thurlow and Kahan are stargazing. It turned out that they had been calling for so long, but there was no one in the tent at all. Thurlow said frankly that he hated Wilfred S. control and surveillance, so he chose to study in Bangkok. What he has always yearned for is freedom. Thurlow was lying on the bamboo raft looking at the stars, while Cahan was watching him until Thurlow found out. Thurlow had always cared about Cahan's drunken kiss. After much deliberation, he decided to ask Cahan if he remembered what happened last night. In fact, Cahan remembered everything, but maybe out of other considerations, he still lied saying that he was very drunk and forgot everything. The two test each other out. Thurlow wanted Cahan to remember the kiss, and Cahan wanted Thurlow to take the initiative. Then, Thurlow asked, if Cahan wasn't his bodyguard, 
would he still be protecting him like this? Kahane's answer is naturally yes. At this moment, he was about to confess his love, but the words were swallowed back. Thurlow couldn't wait for Kahane's answer, and just moved closer and kissed him slowly. On the other side, Tace and Abby were about to go to bed, but Tace couldn't sleep well, and changed positions back and forth three times. No matter how good-tempered Abby is, he can't hold back Tasis waywardness. In the end, he simply rushed over to scratch Tasis itch. With this commotion, the distance between the two suddenly approached. Unable to tell who took the initiative first, the two kissed like this. After not kissing for a while, Abby suddenly reacted and ended the kiss. Tase is still a little confused. Not knowing what happened, Abby then said I'm sorry to Tase and left. On the other hand, Kahan also actively pushed Thurlow away, ending the brief kiss. What's going on? Is this a discussion? Both Kahan and Abby turned down their lovers, so after Kahan refused to kiss, the atmosphere was even more embarrassing. After a while, Kahan pretended nothing happened and wanted to help Thurlow up, but Thurlow was obviously angry and refused Kahan's help. The dispute between the two was on the verge of breaking out. On the other side, Tace chased Abby to the outside of the tent and asked him what happened. Unexpectedly, Abby would not admit his intentions, only saying that he didn't know either. Tace persisted and kept asking Abby why he kissed himself, but Abby would only evade the question and still did not give a positive answer. In this way, Abby and Tace also fell into the Cold War. Looking at Thurlow again, he couldn't help but ask Kahan how he felt about him. Unexpectedly, Kahan also chose to evade. He felt that he was just a bodyguard, and he was not qualified to have other ideas. This answer undoubtedly angered Thurlow. Obviously last night, Kahan asked himself if he loved him, but now he categorically denies it. Not even telling the truth, but until the end, Kahan firmly said that he was a bodyguard and had no other ideas. This completely disappointed Thurlow. Looking at Tace again, Tace followed Abby back to the tent. At this time, Abby pretended to be asleep, and he opened his eyes only after Tace lay down. The two turned their backs to each other, both hiding their thoughts. It's the same here at Thurlow. Thurlow left alone in anger. Cahan wanted to follow him to protect him, but was refused. It seemed that Thurlow was really angry. In fact, Cahan was also in pain. Thurlow had given him so many good memories. How could he not be tempted? But his identity was only a bodyguard, and he couldn't give Thurlow more. That night, seeing that Thurlow was not sleeping soundly, Kahan carefully covered Thurlow with a quilt and hugged him carefully. But in fact, Thurlow wasn't asleep at all. The two were obviously very close, but their hearts are far apart. The next day, everyone packed their bags and prepared to leave. Kahan was also busy packing, but Thurlow snatched his backpack and wouldn't even let Kahan touch it. It seems that this time, the conflict between the two was really serious, and Thurlow's anger lasted for a while, and it can't be dissipated. Afterwards, everyone was eating breakfast, and only Kahan was looking for Thurlow. At this time, Abby also came here, still sitting opposite Tace, trying to communicate with him. It's a pity that Tace was also angry. Seeing that Abby couldn't say a word for a long time, he just left with the bowl. At this moment, Thurlow was reminiscing about last night as he twirled the necklace. Even if Kahan came to ask him to go back, he didn't say a word. On the car back, 
Thurlow deliberately sat next to Dane, not even giving Cahan a look. Tace, he uses his school bag to take up the seat and won't let Abby sit beside him. The other students were all overjoyed. Only the four of Thurlow were full of worries, which was completely opposite to the atmosphere when they came. After returning home, Thurlow dropped no dinner and prepared to go upstairs. Before going upstairs, he didn't forget to give Cahan a glare. That night, Tace and Thurlow made a video call and shared their pain. Thurlow was angry at the way Cahan didn't speak, while Tace thought about Abby not admitting his feelings. Although the objects are different, the troubles of the two brothers at this moment are interlinked. However, after complaining, they asked who the other party was bothering about, and both of them chose to hide it tacitly, so they hung up the phone. The next day, while sketching outdoors, Tace proposed to play football together, and by the way asked Cahan if he wanted to play. Unexpectedly, Thurlow suddenly threw the drawing board angrily. Anyway, Cahan was with him everywhere, so there was no need to ask his opinion. In fact, Thurlow still used this incident to get angry before. In the end, Thurlow left alone, and Tace had to chase after him, leaving Cahan alone. Tace and Thurlow still played football but Cahan didn't participate and watched the game from the sidelines. Later, Abby came here. Thurlow enthusiastically invited him to play football. Abby also readily agreed, but since Thurlow had an extra player, Tace had to add one too. Just like that, Cahan was drawn in. Thurlow was unhappy, but there were not enough manpower, so it had to be like this. Since then, Cahan has been sticking to Thurlow, and he follows Thurlow wherever he goes. It's hard not to suspect that he did it on purpose, the two collided several times in the game, which annoyed Thurlow even more. On the other side, Abby and Tace were also confronting each other. As a result, Abby was accidentally knocked to the ground, and his palms were bleeding. Tace immediately dragged Abby to the infirmary, but the infirmary was empty, so he had to disinfect his hands. Unexpectedly, Tace directly took alcohol and poured it on the wound causing Abby a lot of pain. Seeing this, Tace also felt a little distressed, but he still insisted that he was not worried and was just responsible. So, Abby pulled Tace over and approached slowly, ready to kiss her. As a result, just as the two were about to kiss, Thurlow walked in. The two were so frightened that they separated quickly. Thurlow was about to go home with Tace but was stopped by Abby. It seems that Abby has figured out his mind. This is the rhythm of reconciliation. In this way, Tace agreed to send Abby home. However, Thurlow was still angry with Cahan and bumped him before leaving. At night, Thurlow couldn't help kicking the sofa in agitation. At this time, Cahan came over and asked him to eat. Unexpectedly, when Thurlow went to the restaurant to have a look, he was the only one eating. Cahan was so unfamiliar that he didn't want to eat at the same table with him. The relationship that was finally brought closer seems to be back to the original point now. Thurlow's anger before was all about losing his temper. As long as Cahan coaxed them, they could immediately reconcile. But at this moment, Thurlow was really angry. He pushed Cahan away, letting him go as far as he could. Hey! They were already so close before. How did they become like this? On the other side, Tace sent Abby home on an electric scooter. Abby finally answered the day's question head on. In fact, he himself doesn't understand what's going on in his heart. He only knows that he has only felt the current feelings towards Tace. Having said that, it is actually close to a confession. Tace also seemed to have forgiven Abby and the deputy CP reconciled so sweetly. Thurlow on the other side is still in pain. Back to Thurlow. He was playing with the Rubik's Cube by himself and couldn't figure it out. Thinking about everything that had happened since Cahan and him met, it was not easy for the two of them to develop. And now they have completely changed back to the original relationship. Maybe even not as good as the original relationship. Thinking of this, Thurlow dropped the Rubik's Cube in a fit of anger. Cahan on the side felt a little distressed, but in the end he didn't say anything. Unexpectedly, Thurlow was even angrier. Cahan to be so tepid all the time. 
In a fit of anger, Thurlow even said something about changing the bodyguard. After saying this, he turned and left. But after returning to the room, Thurlow couldn't help but break down and cry. Cahan on the other side is also very uncomfortable. After being attacked before, Cahan wanted to report the incident to Wilfred, but was stopped by Thurlow. One is that he doesn't want to worry Wilfred, and the other is that he doesn't want to expand the conflict between Wilfred and the gang. But now Thurlow said to change the bodyguards. So Cahan disobeyed the order for the first time and called Wilfred to report the attack. After the report, he also deliberately mentioned that Thurlow wanted to replace him. Cahan's original intention was to stay by Thurlow's side, and Wilfred promised Cahan would settle the matter and let him stay by Thurlow's side. After hanging up the phone, Wilfred attacked the gangsters and sent someone to set fire to their warehouse. When the gang fled in a panic, Wilfred made another phone call to report to the house, telling the other party that he set the fire, and warned Sophie again not to touch Thurlow. At the same time, Thurlow kicked down Cahan's door and asked him if he had tipped off Wilfred. From Thurlow's point of view, Cahan must have been desperate to leave to call Wilfred, because Wilfred promised Thurlow that when this matter is resolved, another bodyguard will come to Thurlow's side. What's going on? Why did Wilfred still act as a double-faced person? And the promises to the two people are completely different. Back in the room, Thurlow became more and more angry, and Cahan was also very uncomfortable. At night but unable to sleep, Thurlow grabbed the doll's hat from the bedside table. That's right. The hat I got from playing the game on my date with Cahan, but he didn't take it away because he was attacked, and Cahan returned there afterwards, picked up the photos they took one by one, and brought back the hat by the way. Thurlow was very touched at the time, and he was happy to wash the hat with Cahan, but now, he can only look at the hat and recall the past. Cahan on the other side also looked at his hat. The two obviously miss each other very much, but they can only vent their feelings on a hat. Since Wilfred sent someone to burn down the warehouse of the underworld, and Sophie is also a person who is not afraid of causing trouble, he must take revenge back. But then, the first person in danger is Thurlow. It's just that Thurlow didn't know anything about it at this time. He's asking Dane on a date, of course to make Cahan jealous, in order to better achieve the effect. Thurlow also invited Jaima to join in by the way, for a date of four people, of course Jaima couldn't wish for it. After all, it's well known that she likes Cahan. The ready-made opportunity is here. She must seize it. In this way, the four of them paired up and started a dating schedule. Dane and Jaima head to the bathroom first to get ready. So, Cahan took the opportunity to ask Thurlow why he did this. Thurlow couldn't tell the truth. On the contrary, he deliberately said some angry words to hit the opponent. After the two girls came back, Thurlow proposed to split up the date again, and everyone played separately. Jaima readily agreed, pulled Cahan around and left. At this time, Thurlow, while pretending to be happy in front of Dane, was also sad to see Cahan's back as he went away. Cahan on the other side is also walking and looking back. Hey, why bother? A good lover, it's hard to live in such an awkward way. When he was alone with Dane, Thurlow voluntarily let go of her hand with a heavy expression on his face. Unfortunately, Dane was still immersed in the joy of dating and didn't realize it at all. Then, Thurlow had hallucinations, insisting that Dane was Cahan. On the other side, Cahan and Jaima came to the dessert shop. Cahan was about to eat when Jaima stopped him. It seems that girls all over the world are the same. They have to finish taking pictures before they can start eating. It's just that it took a long time to take this picture. After Jaima finished filming, there was no one on the opposite side. It turned out that Cahan came out to find Thurlow. Seeing this, Thurlow made an uncomfortable excuse and left Dane, walking towards Cahan. But when the two met, Thurlow looked angry again. Cahan told him to go home, but he didn't return and wanted to go back to find Dane. As a result, Cahan directly covered his mouth. Now, the distance between the two was very close again. Thurlow got rid of Cahan later. He didn't lose his temper after all. Then, Thurlow asked Cahan directly how he planned to deal with their relationship. Cahan did so much for him, whether it was out of his duty as a bodyguard or because of some personal feelings. 
Seeing Thurlow begging for an answer so persistently, Cahan also hesitated. Just when he didn't know how to answer, Thurlow pressed his head directly and kissed him. When the kiss was over, Cahan insisted on his previous choice and replied I'm sorry. Upon seeing this, Thurlow left disappointed. Hey, is this the legendary I love you? But I don't say it. For a moment, he didn't know whether he should feel sorry for Cahan's forbearance or for Thurlow who was rejected one after another, but as soon as he walked out, the underworld people rushed up and kidnapped Thurlow, and Cahan was also ambushed and knocked to the ground with a stick. In the end, he could only watch helplessly as Thurlow was escorted into the car by these men and taken away. Fortunately, Tace and the others were nearby and saved Cahan, otherwise the consequences would be disastrous. After learning that Thurlow had been kidnapped, the three boys got into the car immediately, ready to rescue him. By this time Thurlow had been brought in front of Sophie and slapped. Later, Sophie took out her mobile phone, asked Thurlow to make a video call to Wilfred, and hurt Thurlow in front of Wilfred. <laughs> hey, <son! laughs> After hanging up the phone, Wilfred asked Cahan to send the location, he wants to take all his men to settle this matter with Sophie. Then, the gangster's warehouse caught fire again, this time it was Tace who committed the fire. Sophie had to send someone to check on the situation. In the end, Abby and Tace beat the gangsters to the ground instead. At this time, Cahan took the opportunity to sneak into the warehouse in the middle. Thurlow was locked up here, and there were only two people around, but they were no match for Cahan. But when Cahan untied the black cloth, he realized that the person in the middle was not Thurlow at all, but Gordon. Just like that, Cahan and Gordon wrestled together again. In the end, Gordon fell to the disadvantage and took out the dagger directly. After learning that the dagger had been stabbed into Thurlow's heart, Cahan instantly became very angry and grabbed the knife to kill Gordon, but the opponent resisted desperately, and in the end Cahan just kicked him to the ground. On the other hand, Sophie left long ago with the real Thurlow. In order to ensure safety, Sophie sent the last two men to check the situation. Unexpectedly, Thurlow, who was seriously injured, escaped from Sophie. To catch him, Sophie shot straight away. The gunshot also caught the attention of Cahan and the others, so Cahan immediately ran towards the gunshot. Tace and Abby followed closely behind, but Thurlow still couldn't escape Sophie's palm. He was forced to go to the high place. Sophie on the opposite side was holding a gun and was pressing every step of the way. Seeing that the other party was about to pull the trigger, Thurlow even closed his eyes. Getting ready. Just then, Cahan appeared just in time, taking a leap to Thurlow's side. He snatched the gun, pinned Sophie under him and beat him, finishing Sophie. Cahan immediately went to untie Thurlow. At this moment, Sophie's men also chased after him. Cahan hurriedly pulled Thurlow away, but was still flanked and surrounded. Fortunately, Abby and Tace also arrived in time, and the four of them fought together with a large group of gangsters. Cahan was seriously injured. The martial arts skills he had learned before were still there and he was able to knock down several people by himself. In the end, this group of punks was dealt with by them. After such a narrow escape, there is no contradiction between the two of them, but just as they faced each other, ready to hug each other, Gordon raised a pistol behind his back. Seeing this, Cahan immediately turned around with Thurlow in his arms, using himself as a shield to block the shot for him. Fortunately, at this time, Wilfred also led people to rush over, but Thurlow was not happy at all. He was now full of injured Cahan. When Abby and Tace arrived, they saw Cahan lying in Thurlow's arms. <laughs> no matter how much Thurlow shook and shouted, Cahan finally closed his eyes slowly. Cahan was taken to a hospital emergency room. After the operation, the doctor said that his organs did not suffer major damage, 
but he lost a lot of blood, and now he is urgently contacting the blood source. Seeing this, Abby and Tace asked to donate blood one after another, but Cahan had a special golden blood type, and their blood did not match. Thurla was silent for a moment before saying that he has the golden blood type and can donate blood to Cahan, but Cahan's lack of blood is too much. I'm afraid Thurla alone is not enough. Next, Wilfred found Thurla and asked him how he was doing. Seeing his father, Thurlow collapsed in an instant, and he cried all this to Wilfred. Unexpectedly, Wilfred said that there was no need for Thurlow to donate blood to Cahan, and he had already sent someone to get the blood that Cahan had donated regularly before. Only then did Wilfred reveal why he adopted Cahan. Ever since his wife was attacked by his enemies and bled to death, Wilfred swore that he would never let this happen to Thurlow again. So, he scoured the country for someone with the golden blood type and finally found Cahan, who he adopted. After learning the truth, Thurlow became angry instead. He felt that what Wilfred did was not treating Cahan as a real person at all, but as a tool. But Wilfred didn't think he was wrong. Everything he did was to protect Thurlow, and Cahan did it voluntarily. The father and son had a big fight because of this. Eventually, Thurlow walked away in a fit of anger. On the other hand, Cahan is still in the operating room, and Thurlow is fidgeting outside, circling back and forth. It was the first time Wilfred saw such a son, so he didn't know how he felt. After a long time, the doctor finally took out the bullet in Cahan's body, and the blood bag was supplied in time. Everything looks to be improving. A few days later, everyone came to the hospital to visit Cahan, but he was still in a coma. Fortunately, the dangerous period has passed. Everyone is worried about Cahan's health. Only Dane is concerned about whether Thurlow has rest these days. In fact, Dane is still a pretty good girl, but it's a pity that Thurlow already has her own. At night, everyone left and only Thurlow was left guarding Cahan in the ward. At this time, Wilfred came in to persuade him to go home and rest, but Thurlow was still angry with his father, not to mention he didn't want to leave Cahan at all. So, Wilfred took a step back and sent someone home to fetch Thurlow's clothes. Just as Wilfred was about to leave the ward, Thurlow took Cahan's hand and confessed to him. Seeing this scene, Wilfred's eyes became sharper instantly, but he still didn't say anything after all. After some time, Thurlow left home and was about to go to the hospital, but was stopped by Wilfred. Sophie has been caught by the police, and Thurlow will never be in danger again. So, Wilfred decided to let Cahan back to work and leave Thurlow's life after he got better. Hearing this, Thurlow was furious. He doesn't allow Cahan to leave his life. He wants Cahan to stay with him until the future. Quarreled again because of Cahan, Wilfred wanted to wear down Thurlow's affection for Cahan, and he did not hesitate to belittle Cahan's status in order to do so. But Thurlow had already settled on Cahan, so it was useless to anyone. Finally, Thurlow ran into Tace in a coffee shop. Seeing such a depressed friend, Tace couldn't help but persuade him a few words. But Thurlow didn't listen at all. He just wanted Cahan to wake up quickly. At this time, Dane and Jaima are visiting Cahan in the hospital. Seeing such a fragile Cahan, Jaima couldn't help but feel distressed, and even worried that Cahan would not wake up. Fortunately, Dane comforted her and made her feel at ease. Then, Jaima grabbed Cahan's hand and kissed it. Thurlow outside, seeing this scene through the glass, had mixed feelings for a while. Since Cahan's injury, Thurlow has spent every day by the hospital bed waiting for him to wake up. On this day, Cahan's colleague Hagrid came to the ward. Hagrid tells Thurlow that Cahan protects him not just out of duty, but more because Thurlow is the center of Cahan's universe. Cahan wouldn't be able to live without Thurlow. With that said, Hagrid handed Thurlow Cahan's diary. The rest. It's up to Thurlow to judge for himself. On the other hand, Abby and Tace have started living together, and their relationship is quite harmonious. But when the two were making love to each other, Thurlow on the other side was crying bitterly in the ward. He read Cahan's diary. Every page was about him. It appears that Hagrid is telling the truth, and Cahan really only has Thurlow in his life. Then, Thurlow cried and took Cahan's hand. Now, he knows Cahan's feelings for him. Cahan was in a coma and couldn't get up to comfort Thurlow. As Thurlow cried on top of him, he saw the necklace on Cahan's neck. It was given to him by Thurlow, and the two were half of each other. 
each representing the heart of the other. Unexpectedly, Kahan woke up in the next second. The first thing he did when he woke up was to comfort Thurlow. It seemed that he had indeed carved Thurlow into his DNA. Although Kahan woke up, Thurlow had new troubles. He was afraid that Wilfred would let Kahan go. Thurlow told Tace about his troubles, while also confessing that he liked things about Kahan. Unexpectedly, Tace has already seen it. Then, he told about his time with Abby. On this day, Thurlow pushed Kahan out to bask in the sun. In the next second, he got down on one knee and confessed his love to Kahan. This time, instead of rejecting against his will, Kahan nodded and admitted that he loves Thurlow too. With Thurlow for the rest of his life as a lover, the previous misunderstanding was completely resolved at this moment. Thurlow made Kahan call him by his name from now on, because he wanted to be Kahan's god. After making up his mind, Thurlow went to find Wilfred alone. He got down on his knees and begged Wilfred to let him be with Kahan, but Wilfred's attitude is also very tough. He firmly disagrees with the two being together. After Kahan recovers, he will let Kahan go. As a result, a quarrel broke out between the father and son. Finally, Thurlow leaves angrily, but he didn't notice that. In fact, Wilfred's expression was also very uncomfortable. The next day, Abby and Tace walked shoulder to shoulder on campus. Dane saw it. He called them over. Jaima on the side joked about their relationship. So Abby came out of the closet. Seeing that Jaima didn't quite believe it, Abby kissed Tace directly. This time, Dane and Jaima were really surprised, but the two of them still watched the excitement at this moment. Until the next second, Abby told them about Cahan and Thurlow. On this day, Jaima came to the hospital and graciously fed Cahan an apple, while Thurlow could only be jealous. Then, Jaima invited Cahan to have a date with her after he was discharged from the hospital, but Cahan refused. Looking at the sulking Thurlow next to him, Cahan directly took his hand and confessed their relationship to Jaima. Jaima who was shocked, but also Dane who was sitting on the sofa. The two try to look relaxed and let Cahan and Thurlow take care of each other, but as soon as they got out of the ward, the two of them hugged each other and cried, feeling sorry for the two girls for three seconds. At night, Thurlow asks Cahan to elope with him, but Cahan disagrees because running away won't solve the problem. However, if it does come to that point, Cahan will follow Thurlow as well. Thurlow confides in Abby and Tace, and now Wilfred's attitude is very tough, and he doesn't know what to do. At this time, Abby persuaded Thurlow not to get angry with Wilfred. After all, if Wilfred hadn't sent Cahan to protect him, he would not have fallen in love with Cahan. In any case, Everything Wilfred did was for his own good. After hearing this, Thurlow's mood also improved. On the other hand, Wilfred was also troubled by this matter. Hagrid advised him to think about it. Maybe Cahan and Thurlow were meant to be together, but Wilfred didn't believe in fate. He was the one who led all this. He was the destiny. Then, Wilfred sent Hagrid to deal with Cahan. It seems that this is to beat the Mandarin ducks forcibly. At this time, Cahan was at home and Thurlow went out to buy groceries. Before going out, he also specially left a post-it note. Seeing the call from Hagrid, Cahan suddenly had a bad feeling. Later, Cahan came to the rooftop to fight Hagrid alone. When Thurlow returned home again, Cahan was not seen. Just when he thought something was wrong, he received a message from Cahan on his mobile phone. Cahan told Thurlow that he was called away by Hagrid, regardless of the outcome. I hope Thurlow will not resent Wilfred. He will always love Thurlow. After reading the news, an anxious Thurlow called Abby and Tace to help find someone together. At this time, Tace remembered that Cahan's mobile phone had location software. The three people got into the car immediately and followed the location to find Cahan. Meanwhile, Cahan was already at a disadvantage in the fight. After all, he had only recently recovered. But even so, it is impossible for him to admit defeat and leave. For Cahan, it was impossible for him to give up Thurlow voluntarily. It was better to let him die. Cahan finished speaking. Wilfred appeared. At this time, the three of Thurlow also came here, and they decided to split up to find Cahan. On the rooftop, Cahan knelt beside Wilfred. 
He couldn't guarantee that Thurlow would be happy forever, but he could guarantee that he would always love and protect Thurlow. Unfortunately, this level of love is far from enough for Wilfred. Then, Wilfred took out his pistol. Since Cahan could die for Thurlow, let's call it a day. Downstairs, Thurlow was still trying to find Cahan, and the sudden gunshots made him terrified. <laughs> Just when Thurlow was trembling upstairs and accidentally tripped himself, Cahan appeared beside him and helped him up. Finally, the two embraced tightly. It turned out that all this was Wilfred S. Test of Cahan, the first level. Cahan temporarily passed, but Wilfred has a second hurdle, which is the test of time. Wilfred is going to send Thurlow to study abroad, during which the two cannot communicate. If they still love each other when Thurlow returns from studying abroad, Wilfred will agree with them. In this way, Cahan agreed to Wilfred's second test. He reassures Thurlow that time does not change their love. In the next few days, the two never separated for a second, sticking together all the time. In fact, Thurlow was still a little scared inside. If Wilfred keeps disagreeing, Cahan isn't worried. Though, if Wilfred disagreed, he would just wait. Anyway, the two of them have already exchanged their hearts. At night, Cahan and Thurlow lie down together and look at the stars. Unfortunately, there is not a single star in the sky in Bangkok. It's better to go to the foreign government where I went to support education before. The sky is full of stars. So, Cahan promised Thurlow that when he came back from studying abroad, the two of them would go to the outer mansion to watch the starry sky together. Cahan almost confessed his love to Thurlow on the night of watching the stars in the outer mansion. But in the end, he still couldn't speak out. And the two had a dispute because of this. But now, Cahan added that confession. Whether he was Thurlow's bodyguard or not, he would protect Thurlow with his life. Then, the two kissed each other and kissed all the way to the bed. When it was all over, Thurlow fell asleep from exhaustion. Cahan helped him cover the quilt, took one last look at him, and left quietly. When Thurlow woke up the next day, Cahan was no longer there, and his things had been cleaned up. On the table is the breakfast that Cahan made, as well as the note and doll had he left behind. Thinking about the scenes that happened in the past, Thurlow finished the fried rice crying. Six years later, Thurlow was studying in Japan. After completing the study tasks as usual, he picked up the doll hat that Cahan left behind which was what the two of them got when they first went on a date. On the other hand, Cahan applied the medicine skillfully to himself, and at the same time thought of Thurlow helping him apply the medicine in the past. Afterwards, Cahan also picked up Thurlow's doll's hat to clear his mind. Finally, Thurlow finished his studies and returned to Thailand to help Wilfred, but before starting work, he wanted to take a break and meet friends. The first person he wanted to meet was naturally Cahan, but unfortunately Cahan couldn't come to see Thurlow without Wilfred's consent. Even after six years, Wilfred still doesn't approve of them being together. Later, when Thurlow came to Cahan's room, the first thing he saw was the group photo that Cahan put on the bedside table. Not only the group photos, but even the roses that Thurlow sent for the first time. Cahan put them in the room. On the other hand, seeing Thurlow and Cahan prove their love for each other with time, Wilfred has almost let go. In the afternoon, Thurlow went to catch up with old friends, but unfortunately Cahan didn't come, and Thurlow became visibly disappointed. Tonight, Thurlow, who had finished making friends, came to the outer palace alone. Cahan obviously agreed to him, and when he came back, the two of them would come here to watch the stars together, but now it was only him. Afterwards, Thurlow tried to push the boat out onto the river, but he couldn't. Just then, Cahan appeared by his side. He saw Cahan. Thurlow broke down in tears. After all, 
He has been thinking about this person for six years. It turned out that Wilfred finally let go and agreed to the two being together. It was also Wilfred who made Tahan come to the foreign government to find Thurlow. After going through so many turmoil, they can finally stay by each other's side until now. The two hearts have finally pieced together into a complete love. Here, the play is completely over, the young master and the bodyguard can finally be sweet forever. I don't know what everyone thinks about this drama. Welcome to leave your thoughts in the comment area. Well, this issue is over here. See you next time.